We're going to conclude this section on the direct stiffness method and in particular the use of frames or beam elements by just having a look at how we could incorporate actual forces along the axes of the bar and how similar to what we did with bars how we can transform the matrices into two dimensions and the extension to three dimensions is relatively simple from there on. So looking here what we've got is we've set up now our displacement vector or unknown degrees of freedom vector into uh, a delta 1 in the direction of the bar, a delta 1v but we're, is the transverse displacement to the bar, theta 1 rotation of the bar at node 1 and again then we've got the same degrees of freedom at the right hand side of the bar and the complementary forces with that are the F1x which is in the direction of the bar and the F1y which is transverse to the bar and a moment T1 acting on theta 1. Okay so what we've done by doing this if we examine the stiffness matrix what we essentially have is all of the components that were in our frame matrix are still in the stiffness matrix but we've added to that the actual effects the ea over l 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 we've added into the matrix so there we go ea over l minus ea over l minus ea over l ea over l and now we can consider both X and Y displacement or displacements along the bar and transverse to the bar all with this matrix formulation. Okay, there are some important things to consider and some bits that can be quite confusing. So we're going to go through these. What's important to note is if we look at this row and multiply by the column of unknown displacements notice for the actual forces only ever multiply so this term here only ever multiplies by the displacement along the bar we have zeros zeros here and here where we're multiplying by the transverse displacement or multiplying by the rotation so the actual effects are not fully coupled with the beam effects the bending effects so let's can try to illustrate what we mean just by way of a diagram. If we had an original beam of length L and after maybe we've applied some moments at the end, we have a new deformed configuration. If we then decided to add compressive forces to the ends of the bar, what would happen in reality is if we what we call including geometric effects what we would expect is that this forces would cause even more bending and we're, that's a natural thing to assume however because we don't have any coupling terms in our matrix essentially what we're saying is but the forces, it, the F1x and the F2x, will always act down the axes of the bar and therefore don't generate any further bending effects. Now for the vast majority of frame analysis programs that get used on a day-to-day -day basis in a, a consultancy, this is the case. There are cases where you can choose the option of geometric nonlinearity, where you can have the extra bending arising from actual forces, but in general, this is not the case. So this stiffness matrix here, and, and this element equation in general, is what is in the vast majority of commercial structural analysis programs. Okay. Obviously, a one-dimensional beam element isn't that much use to a designer. So, again, like we did with trusses, 
we'd like to convert our equations into two dimensions. And so what we need to do is define the transformation matrix that would be appropriate now. So we have causes and signs, but we need to operate on the X and Y displacements into some global set of chords if we rotated the, the beam by some angle. And these operate, so we can see the signs and causes here, and the signs and causes here, but operate purely on the displacements alone. Okay, and then for the rotations, the rotations don't need transforming, so we simply have ones on the diagonal. And like we did with the truss analyses, is then to convert a one dimension. So our one dimension, dimensional stiffness matrix is that that we've written above. If we want to transform that to two dimensions, we need to apply the G transpose, the transformation matrix transpose as a pre-multiplier and the transformation matrix as a post-multiplier to get our stiffness matrix in 2D from our stiffness matrix in one dimension.